Hello, sisters. Welcome to the Sacred Medicine Podcast, weaving powerful, soulful practices into functional medicine. Step into this beautiful space of devotion and explore everything from nurturing foods, rituals, sexuality, and awakening your innate sensuality. It is time to own your radiance. This is the Sacred Medicine Podcast. Hello and welcome back to another week of the Sacred Medicine Podcast. Hope you are all doing fabulous today as we are entering here into fall season on the East Coast. And I am really excited about today's guest. It is Connor Beaton. He is the founder of Mantox, an international organization focused on men's health, wellness, success, and fulfillment. What he does is that he helps develop self-aware, high-performing, and impactful men in this world. He helps develop this in men. I mean, how hot is that? It's just like, you want to know who these men are, right? So ladies, hang on to your seats because we are getting into a lot of really juicy questions today. He is also the host of a podcast called Man Talks, which is really cool. And if you haven't listened in on any of his podcasts, you should head on over there. So today's episode, we are talking about so much around dating and men and why men are sometimes in this holding pattern, um, where they may not be ready to fully commit. We talk about the reasons behind that possibly why men seek freedom and why they, that may be another reason why they don't fully commit to you or to your relationship. Uh, we also talk about you know, the quality of men that are online dating. (laughs) And for those of you that do online dating, you already have gotten a taste of the type of men that are out there. Yes, there are, there's a mixture and there's just, uh, lots of different flavors out there of men. And I know that a lot of my single girlfriends, we talk about like, where are all the good men and all of that stuff. So We talk a lot about that. Also talk about what, if you do have a partner, how you can deepen your intimacy with your partner and what to do if you want your man to be more open, to be more vulnerable, which I know can be hard um, for a lot of men to really be very emotionally expressive. So we dive into that. We talk about holding space, what that means, how men can really do that for us women and how we can mutually do this together, um, during, um, you know, our really beautiful conversations and, you know, just his belief about where we need to be when it comes to dating, to finding the person that we're meant to be with, um, our deep beliefs So excited to share this interview with you. Well, without further ado, on to the show. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Sacred Medicine Podcast. I am your host, Margaret Romero, and today's special guest is Connor Beaton. He helps develop self-aware and high-performing and impactful men in the world. Thank you so much for joining me today, Connor. Thanks very much for having me on. So I love your podcast, by the way, and Man Talks. You are the host and founder of Man Talks. And I know you work primarily with men. But what I love the most is that you help men develop this self-awareness and impactful men, which I just think like those words are... (laughs) They're, they're just things that women love and women want. And time and time again, with conversations with even with just me and my girlfriends, my single girlfriends, we are always talking about how we feel like the dating pool lacks these types of men. And maybe these types of men really aren't online dating. I'm not sure, but that's a question for us today. 
And I would love to dive a little deep into how women, because I feel like the majority of women that I work with that I um, that are on this podcast are really, you know, the feminine, the, the rise in the consciousness in women is I feel on the rise as well as men. Um, but I, I'm also feeling that there are so many more women who are having this conversation about the lack of self-aware men out there to date. Um, and I would just love your take on that and how, if we are partnered, how we can maybe develop or is, or if, if the person, the man is not self-aware or is not really conscious? Is it just time to let that relationship go? Or is there a way to kind of um, draw that out in him? I know several yeah, topics so here, but yeah, I'd love to, <laughs> I'd love to know just um, your thoughts around that. Yeah. So there's, I mean, there's, there's a few really great pieces and maybe I'll just start with uh, the dating pool side of things because it, it's something that I definitely hear a lot. And, you know, all of our events, uh, for man talks all over North America, there the majority of them, minus some special events, are all open to men and women. And we've done that specifically because I wanted women to be a part of the conversation. I wanted women to be able to see that, you know, there are these self-aware, impactful men out there that they're they're not uh, an anomaly. They're not unicorns, as as I hear them frequently, <laughs> you know, referred to, right. and that they really do exist. You know, and that a lot of a lot of men have the capacity to be these self aware, to be these impactful men, to be these, um, you know, what I refer to as integrated men. So, into being able to integrate the masculine essence and the feminine essence, and they they do exist and they are out there. And so, what I what I would just start by saying is that. There's a few things that I think are important. First and foremost, you know, we we attract what we believe we're worth. And so oftentimes when we attract in these partners, whether, you know, it's men attracting in women or women attracting in men or men attracting men, whatever the dynamic is, when we attract in these partners, oftentimes they're a reflection of what we think we deserve or what we believe is out in the world. So if we believe that there are no good men left, then we are going to find not good men. Right. If we believe that, you know, all men are assholes or whatever the stereotype is, or, or on the other side, if we believe that, you know, all women lie or whatever the, our internal narrative is, that's what we're going to attract. That's what we're going to find in the world. And so when, when we're attracting these people in, my challenge for the for the people that are having that happen is to always first and foremost challenge your beliefs to really take a, a a look at what your core belief is around the people that you're trying to attract in and the type of people that you're actually dating because more often than not it's an indicator of a uh, an internal limiting belief that you have either about your self-worth and as who you are as a partner or it's a limiting belief as to who you believe is out there in the world. And so you start seeking that, right? It's like mm. the red, red car syndrome, right? Like you you don't see any red cars out in the world because you're not looking for it. But as soon as, as, soon as you want to go buy a red car, like a red Porsche, all of a sudden you see them everywhere, right. you know? And <laughs> you're like, where the heck have all these red Porsches been? And so that's, that's very much the same thing. Our brain and this is a little bit scientific, but our brain is set up to be a pattern recognizer. And so what that means is that it recognizes what we have given it in the past. And so if what we've given it in the past is abusive partners or partners that were bad listeners or partners that weren't able to hold space for us, then it recognizes that as a pattern. And so we have to work extra hard to start to find new evidence and new patterns for it to recognize. So all it takes sometimes is to find a few men who who break that mold, who break that pattern so that we have a new pattern that our brain and that our heart and that our soul can start to search for. Okay. But how are we? Okay. So if we started to, okay, so you have these groups 
And I assume that these, um, first of all, I, I need to know more about these groups. <laughs> and <laughs> if they're in Manhattan, um, because I've got, I've got a large community of women that I'm part of, so that is something we should talk about. Um, but when we start to see evidence, I, do we need to see the evidence first of men like this that actually exists for us to be like, oh, okay, so this is what it feels like to be around men that are super self-aware Com- compared to someone that's maybe never really been around self-aware men. How would you know what that's like and how to attract them and how yeah, to know like, when you do meet them? Yeah. It, it's kind of like the, the, the chicken and the egg or the horse and the carriage, right? Like which one comes first? Um, I, I feel like there's, there is some validity to being able to experience it first and foremost, because otherwise you don't really know what you're looking for. And so what I would say is for, for the majority of women that are looking for this different type of dynamic, there, there are a few ways in which I've heard it be described. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy, I'm not a, I'm not a woman. And so it's a, it's a different sensation. It's a different feeling for me in, in my masculine essence to be around a woman who really embodies her feminine versus a woman to be around a man who really embodies his masculine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and again, those are, those aren't necessarily, um, I'm not referring to masculine or feminine as, as a gender label, but more so as an essence, as a feeling, as an experience, because we all have masculine and feminine tendencies, beliefs, behaviors, and essences within us. And so when, when a woman is around a man who really is embodying his masculine, he's, he's grounded, he's, he's in the present moment. And this, these are some of the things that you'll want to start to look for because a, a man who is really in his masculine is the, because the masculine essence really embodies that present moment, really embodies being grounded, being centered, being not in the past and not necessarily caught up in the future, but being right there in, in the moment. Mm -hmm. And there'll be, there'll be some sort of like magnetic pull that you'll start to feel into his presence. And how I've heard a lot of women describe it, I I heard one woman describe it beautifully. Her name is uh, Giordana Tocacelli, and she's actually here in New York. Um, And how she, how she described it was, it was like, and I'm going to use her words. It was like I was out in the sun for a really long time and I found shade to rest in. And I thought, what a beautiful Mm. description. It was, it was just like this space of feeling as though she could relax, feeling as though she, you know, some women might might use the word safe or mm. secure, but just feeling like, ah, oh, you know, like I could yeah. just like let the let the exhale come. And that is the sort of experience that you want to sort that you want to start to look for within a man. And his outer experience, what he does for his work, how he shows up in life, you know, his family, what, you know, what sports he plays, all those other types of things might look very different than what you thought you might be looking for. But who he is and and how he shows up and how you experience him, that's the general uh, experience that you want to feel when you're in his presence. Okay. Okay. And would you say that these men that you... I'm sure you have now, like you working with hundreds of men over, I'm not sure how long, but th- are they experiencing or have they also expressed um, the inability to find women who are on the conscious path or is it much, are they saying that they are finding them f- pretty easily? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, there's, everybody has their their limiting beliefs and their their narratives and so you know there's there's a lot of guys depending on the city it's kind of funny because you know with man talks i've been to the majority of the major cities around north america over the past you know three or four years and really had to really got to get a good perspective and and it seems to be that in each city there's a different belief about the opposite sex 
and and it's really it's really quite funny like if you go to vancouver canada the belief is that you know women are really hard to approach and women believe that guys um are are too afraid to come and talk to them and so there's this really interesting dichotomy here in new york it's that you know oftentimes guys are overly aggressive like they over approach and that they're like in your face and they won't leave you alone and they're <laughs> so direct and they and they, they they just don't seem to understand how to have like a a, a healthy like softer approach or uh you know be able to like not not one and dine but be able to be somewhat charismatic in their approach rather than just like hey you uh i want this <laughs> <laughs> um so so yeah i think a, a lot of guys are are wanting to be with more self-aware conscious women and and many of them communicate struggling to find them so ladies if you're out there trust me there are men that are looking for you as well that's good news for all of us listening <laughs> <laughs> um okay so what are you what tell me a little bit about you know creating deeper intimacy in relationships with men who are maybe not so self-aware how can a deeper connection let's start with that one first mm. yeah so a, a lot of guys i think i want to preface this with just saying a lot of men you know one of the things that i because I, I do a lot of interviews on on podcasts that that focus for for women and speak at events that that are about masculine and feminine dynamics and and one of the questions that I get asked a lot is how do I how do I support men or how do I know when a man is ready or how do I know when to leave? And so each of those are kind of their own answer. Mm -hmm. But what I will preface this with is that a lot of men will be in this like holding pattern or being in this holding phase of committing fully in a relationship or being able to really step into intimacy within his relationship until he feels a sense of being able to provide in some capacity. And every man's version of that is going to look different. For some men, they're going to want to be able to provide emotional security. For other men, it's financial security. For other men, it's it's time. They're going to want to be able to free up their time so they can spend more time with their partner. But whatever the, whatever that looks like for each individual man, a lot of the times they will be in this holding pattern and they won't seem to be able to commit or step fully into the relationship or into vulnerability and intimacy because they feel like there's a part of their life that that isn't at the level that they wish it to be mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they have this they have this internal perspective that in order for them to really be the husband or the father that they have envisioned for themselves that x y and z needs to happen first mm -hmm. it's kind of like the if then, if this, then that, right? If I can make that job or if I can make this amount of money or if I can get that promotion, then I'll ask her to marry me. Then I will have the conversation about kids. And so a lot of guys have that, have that approach. And so the, the, one of the biggest things that women can do around finding out whether a man is, is really ready is to start to ask the right questions in and around, you know, where do you feel like you're at in your life and being very transparent. And, and this is where, you, you know, as, as a partner, you need to know where you're at. Are you ready for marriage? Are you ready for kids? And to not, not be apologetic for those things, not, not try and avoid or skirt around the issue that, you know, you are in your mid thirties and you want to get married. You know, and that's just where you're at. You want to have a long term committed relationship with somebody who's ready for the same thing. And and that if you scare off men who aren't ready for that, that that's actually a good thing. You right. know, like I, I see a lot of women that are that are worried about scaring off men because they are ready to be in a committed monogamous relationship. And it's like, great, you should you should scare off the men that aren't ready for exactly. that. The guys that the guys that are still in that holding pattern that are just looking to have sex with you, you know, for a month or two and, and then, and then move on because they don't feel like they can fully provide you with what you're looking for. So, so there's that. And, and then there's the ability to inquire 
of whether or not a man is is ready, whether or not he's in the space. And this is a very intuitive thing, right? Because the 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 guy might say like, oh yeah, you know what, I'm looking for a relationship right now. Or, yeah, I think I think I'm ready, right? This is this is one of the things you might hear a lot of guys say. I think I'm ready. I think that's what I want right now. That is usually a very clear indicator that he hasn't made a full decision. And men will often speak, and this is really important, men will often speak in possibilities. So they'll often communicate in, yeah, that could be an option. Having a full-time, engaged, monogamous relationship with you is a possibility. It's an option. It's not a certainty. And oftentimes when when women are, are communicating with men, they're looking for that they're looking for that certainty. They're looking for that right. promise. And and so listening to what he's saying is going to be really important to hear whether or not he's actually ready and and what his reservations might be around leaning in and, and fully engaging in, in that relationship that you're looking for. Yeah, I think it's so true. I think a lot of women tend to not say what it is that they really want and they're kind of tiptoe around the fact that if they are ready for marriage or whatever it is, kids, um, and they think that the guy probably isn't or he hasn't really expressed that, she's scared that the minute she says it that he'll be gone, which may in fact be true, but i rather have someone that would be gone and then because it just would seem like just a big, huge waste of time to be with someone that is in alignment with my own desires. Right. And, and I mean, the, I think the, you're pointing to something that's really important, which is that men and women experience and view time very differently with, with men, we sort of see the, the climax of everything as almost being our death as almost being the end of our life. Like that's sort of like the climax of, of, you know, that's the end. That's when everything sort of comes to a close. And so our view of life is often stretched out quite a bit more, whereas the feminine has this beautiful, you know, biological clock within her. And for a lot of women, from what they've communicated to me, they experience, they experience this um, urgency at some point in their life of wanting to have that committed relationship. And this is, this is on the assumption that we're talking about, you know, people that are wanting to have monogamous relationships versus open relationships or polyamorous relationships. Right. So, so the, so a lot of women will, will experience time differently because there's a different sense of, okay, if I want kids or with the knowledge that I do want children, that there's a limited time frame that I can do that. Whereas a man can be 50 or 60 and sometimes even 70 and still be in the reproductive phase. And some men legitimately aren't ready until they're in their 40s and their 50s. And they they haven't stepped into their integrated masculine or they haven't moved through their sort of um, childhood wounding enough to be in the space to want to provide those things with a partner. And so it's important to know that that men and women often will experience time in a very different way. There's less urgency for men. Mm. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, well, there's also something else I just thought of. When it comes to freedom for men, I feel that that's a huge topic that men f- have a fear of losing their freedom. And to them being in a relationship or being quote unquote coerced into a relationship, which I think is not the way I'd want somebody to be in a relationship with me is losing their freedom. Is that something that you hear time and time again? Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of guys, it's, it's that, that masculine essence within us, the masculine will seek freedom. I think the thing to, to really sort of, acknowledge though is that freedom can come in many forms and that you know a lot of men are seeking freedom from a liberation standpoint but they haven't quite identified what that means to them so there can be a beautiful sense of freedom within a monogamous relationship that that a lot of men and women will express and experience 
in in ways that are far deeper than they could express an experience in maybe an open relationship or just dating and sleeping around because there's a there's a there's a depth to the intimacy that can't be experienced when you're just dating and sleeping with random people you're not going to be able to experience that person on uh with the depth that you can within an intimate monogamous relationship Mm. and so yes absolutely men seek freedom and it is one of if not our highest um, sort of internal driving forces we will want to feel free now for a lot of men that that can show up in a lot of ways and and there's different phases that men will go through so a lot of the times if a man is feeling like his relationship is infringing on his freedom or his ability to feel free it's probably because he is he is cut off from his ability to really step into his masculine leadership within relationship and step into his ability to be vulnerable and connect with his partner in a very intimate way because if he did he would find that the ultimate freedom is actually in that space it's actually in that present moment and so oftentimes men who who communicate or who are wanting to run from relationships that call for them to really dive deeper they're just they're they're not ready and they have a very surface level a very young version of what freedom means, mm-hmm. you know, absolute, absolute freedom actually isn't freedom. It's chaos, right? If we could, it's like the particles in our body, the particles in our body hold us together and make us who we are. If there was no structure to that, if there was ultimate freedom for the particles in our body, we wouldn't exist. Our particles would just spread out throughout the universe mm-hmm. and they would never, they would never come together to form who we actually are. But a lot of men have a very immature version of what they think freedom means. So freedom for a lot of men will mean I need to have ultimate freedom in time. I need to have ultimate freedom of relationship. I need to have ultimate freedom of finance. And that means the ability to go do, say, and experience whatever they want at any time, regardless of the circumstances. And the reality is, is that a lot of men will experience that. They'll get a taste of it and realize that that's not freedom. That's oftentimes just a a feeling of chaos in that moment. And that the ultimate freedom can come within a container within a, a a form a form or a structure and oftentimes a relationship is the ultimate vehicle to do that so there's there's transformation through the intimacy that we can experience within a relationship mm, i really love that but i i feel that a lot of men have this immature sense of what freedom really is and then They'll push away any sort of relationship or deepening at all to, you know, um, feel single again or spend, um, their money or their, their time with, um, lots of different women. And, and like you said, it is an immature way of seeing what freedom is like. But when you have a guy that is like that, and he's really kind of skirting away all the time from developing something deeper, then what do you do as a woman? Yeah, so being able to identify, I think some some of the indicators, like some good questions to ask a man to get a sense of what his, what his freedom are, are to be direct and to say, you know, what's your version of freedom? When do you feel the most free? How do you experience freedom within a relationship? And if he can't answer these questions, he's probably never reflected on it, right? It's right. probably something that he's he's never thought about. And that doesn't mean that you should dismiss him and and you know toss him to the curb <laughs> or anything like that. But but maybe you're the catalyst that allows him to start thinking about these things and to start defining what those things are for himself. And to, to see whether or not those definitions line up with what you are looking for in your relationship dynamic. Because you know, freedom can be brought within a monogamous relationship and and in a lot of circles for a lot of teachers is the ultimate form of intimacy. So, you know, asking things like, um, what books have you read around relationships? You know, have you have you read any books around relationships? If so, which ones did you you know, what did you like about them? What did you learn? Because men want to, will always want to share knowledge. It's just something that we, 
we do. Like you can get a guy talking about knowledge any, anytime. So that's a good place to start. You know, has he has he read anything by David Data? Has he read Robert Augustus Masters or Robert Glover's No More Mr. Nice Guy? Has he have he has he stepped into any of this work in any way, shape, or form? Mm-hmm. If, if he has, then it is, there's probably a good chance that he started to question what freedom actually means to him. Mm. If he hasn't, then, you know, he he might need a little nudge <laughs> mm. uh, or or it might be something that he just hasn't hasn't questioned yet in, in his life. So to start to ask some of these questions is really important because it'll start to help you identify where he might be at. And it kind of depends on, you know, where you're at in that dating process. If you're at the very beginning, then these are great questions to ask. If you've been with him for two years and you know that he's never picked up a, a, a book about relationships or masculinity or any of those other types of things and you feel that, um, you know, his version of freedom is just being able to do and say and experience whatever the hell he wants whenever he wants and he's not open to doing any form of work or self-reflection, then you need to question why you're with that person because mm. there there is a time to stay and help someone um, experience themselves. And then there's a time to realize that you're wasting your time. And it might sound harsh and very direct, but it's it's the reality of it. It's true. It's true. And I think that uh, those questions may not be really discussed in the first few if you just start dating somebody. Um, it's definitely something that I inquire about from the very beginning, just so I can see the level of depth that they are already in. If they've read books by David Data, then that would absolutely spark my interest. I will have to say, like, let's say 10 out of 10 dates, all will say no. So that's, it, you know, it. I'm finding... I'm not really necessarily finding, nor are a lot of my girlfriends finding the men that are in the pool of, I guess, men that attend your man talks. So mm. I, that is something that I think that maybe the more discussion and the more, like you said about the red car, um, you'll just start seeing it more kind of the more you're, um, thinking about it or focused on it or really um, believing that they're really all around because they really are. I mean, I think that the the self-aware men are really all around and maybe they're not necessarily doing online dating. Um, would yeah, you I mean, s- I, if, if I could just interject there, I mean, yeah. like I never used I never used online dating and <laughs> like it was just something that like I've never had a Tinder profile or, or any of those things. And so, you know, to, to your point, to your yeah. point, it's, it's where, where are you fishing, right? If you're yeah. fishing, if you're fishing for trout, and this is a, this is such a man analogy, I'm laughing, but if you're fishing for trout and you're fishing in a lake that only has salmon, you're never going to catch trout. Like right. it's just, that's just how it is. So if you're on Tinder, hoping to meet some enlightened guy and all you're attracting is, you know, dudes that, that, just want to bang quote unquote, like that shouldn't surprise you. You're fishing in the wrong pool. And so, you know, Einstein said the the definition of insanity is doing the same thing (laughs) over and over again and expecting a different result. If you keep going back to Tinder, hoping to find somebody that, you know, is the odd man out is the unicorn in the crowd, you know, don't be surprised if it just doesn't happen. You have to start looking in different areas. You have to start going to the events where you think that these guys might potentially be, where you feel like these guys would be learning and growing. If you're going to go to, you know, a uh, a bar or a hockey game, you're probably going to find, not that I don't go to hockey games. Uh, I, I do. I definitely do. I'm Canadian. It's just like in my blood. But <laughs> You know, right. to start to to start to find out and do a little bit of research about where you think these guys might be, you know, events like Man Talks and you know, things like Mind Valley and Awesomeness Fest and Summit Series, then you're going to start to connect with the men who are aligned with the values and the beliefs that you're looking for. Yes, absolutely. Um, and have you been to David Data um, events? I haven't been to his workshops, but I've seen him speak a few times and I've met him and connected with him uh, on a number of occasions. But yeah. 
Yeah, I have. Um, I've thought about going to one of his his events. They're somewhat. They seem a little um, intense. A, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not necessarily. But like a weekend will be. Um, I I thought pricey, but it is David Data, and some of them are for couples, and so. I, I don't really see ones for single people necessarily. Mm. They're more like yeah, I mean, workshops. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's, you know, there's merit. If you're in Los Angeles, you could um, start to connect with guys that are a part of John John Wyland's community. I mean, mm -hmm. he's a great spiritual teacher, mm -hmm. and you know, he focuses a lot with on masculine. Um, David Data's work is is very interesting, and I think that it works for some people and not for everyone. And he's got, you know, once you start going really into the depths of David Data's work, um, it's it's a very interesting dynamic between men and women. And so, you know, that's just an example of where you can find some of these men who who are integrated, who are awake, who are starting to ask some of the right questions. Um, it doesn't mean that it's it's the be all end all answer um, to you know find your find your soulmate. Mm, right, right, right. So let's um let's talk a little bit briefly about <clears throat> if you are currently in a relationship, and I I feel that this is another question I get often is about um, being able to. We talked a little bit before we got on the call about deepening intimacy. Um, I love talking about intimacy. So let's let's just go there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, deepening intimacy, I think, is something that a lot of people, you know, once they start down this path and once they start to develop a better connection with their partner, then the natural progression is to start to look at the intimacy within the relationship. And, and an intimacy isn't just defined as the sexual connection, right? Intimacy is, is the ability to really feel connected to somebody, not just on a physical or sexual level, but from an emotional space, from a, a space of trust, from a space of physical and, and mental connection. So intimacy is, is such a broader um, such a broader space than we often give it credit for because we usually associate intimacy with purely a sexual connection. Mm. Uh, but in order to deepen intimacy, there's there's some really important pieces. And for me, the first piece is to be able to look at at what we are what we are reactive to and where we're avoiding being honest or vulnerable. So let's just start with reactivity because reactivity is usually a, a, a pointer or an indicator to our shadow side. And reactivity is, you know, those things in relationship where all of a sudden we completely lose our temper or we just, so, you know, something, something gets said in the relationship and all of a sudden we just shut down or we start crying or we stonewall and we storm out. Those, those are the things that we really need to take a look at because those are intimacy blockers the things that we react heavily to are the things that are cutting us off from deepening our connection to our partner so there's a multitude of examples of of what that would look like but let's just let's just take an example of um, something that we want to try sexually with our partner maybe we want to connect with them and we want to try and experience something with them on a on a physical and a sexual level and we ask them uh, to try that and they they become defensive and they start to shut down about it and mm -hmm. they don't want to talk about it and you know all of a sudden they react in a very negative way that we're not expecting and in that moment in that space it's saying something about a part of them about part of their shadow that they feel uncomfortable with not that we want to manipulate them into doing what we want or experimenting in the way that we want to experiment but to start to say, you know, why did that, wh what about that was so triggering for you? What, like, how did that make you feel? Like, what, what in that space made you feel uncomfortable that caused you to shut down or, or to turn away? And, and to really start to be curious about the things that we're reactive to, because those are always components that are blocking us from being deep, deeply connected to our partner, whether it's sexually or emotionally or mentally. Mm. 
Great. So let's say they're not able to, they're not used to or have ever been taught how to be more open and more vulnerable. How do you get your partner to open up a little more? (laughs) <laughs> this is like the million dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> I, <laughs> I like I can't tell you how many men come to me and they're like, my wife is asking me to be more open and vulnerable. What the hell does that mean? And how do I do it? <laughs> uh, or or women coming to me being like, I love your work. How can I get my boyfriend to open up more? And it's like, well, they're, they're, first off, there is no real secret formula. You know, everybody's different mm-hmm. and everybody is facing an, a different internal challenge. Challenge. What is important to know, the, the sort of universal, is, is if you really want to understand what people are going through and how to help them open up, mm-hmm. is to start to be witness to what their, what their wounding might be. You know what their what their childhood wounding might be, right? And and to start to have empathy for them, and to sometimes be able to have the courage to lead with vulnerability, to lead with opening up, and you know a lot of the times, I, I see this struggle in a, in a lot of modern women who are just badass, you know, who are rock stars in business, they crush it, they're you know they would they would consider themselves to be quote unquote, you know, very sort of like masculine women that are in that space every day in the work environment, but are struggling in their intimate relationships because they either attract men that they walk all over and they hate that, Mm -hmm. or they, they attract these, you know, complete assholes and they want nothing to do with them. And because they, then they just are in competition with these guys constantly. Mm -hmm. And so those seem to be the two types of men that they're attracting and so it's like how do i find this space well it requires you to actually open up first and foremost and it requires it requires you to lead with a sense of vulnerability and that's confronting because real the the men that are that are integrated the men that understand their the masculine and the feminine will not only be able to hold space for your vulnerability but are actually looking for it you know they're not looking to be in a relationship with you know a guy that has lady parts the majority of them aren't looking for that right like they're looking to be with a woman who really embodies her feminine who really understands even if she's a rock star in business during the day someone who's able to come home at night and soften into her feminine yeah and that's that's something that the guy isn't isn't responsible for just like it's his responsibility to be able to come home and not bring the baggage and the anger and the aggression that he might have from his job during the day home into the relationship. And so just to come back full circle, how do you get your man to to open up? How do you get him to really step in and meet you in a space of vulnerability? It's always first and foremost by leading with a sense of vulnerability with yourself. Mm. And, and I would say that Possibly one of the worst things that you can do is to continue to harp on him to open up because he might not have a for, uh, a form of reference for that. And it'll just frustrate him more because he'll right. feel like he's just he's just failing. He's like, OK, I'm failing. You want me to open up and be more vulnerable. And now I'm not doing that. And, you know, now I'm not a good boyfriend or a good husband. And just like and he'll just he'll get he'll get frustrated and it'll push him further away. Right. And so, you know, to be able to find where he might be leaning in and it might not be in the areas that you want to hear about it first you know like you might want him to open up about your relationship or your love life or your your sexual connection but he might be opening up to you about work he might be opening up to you about family he might be you know leaning into vulnerability in a different category than you might want it to but but the best thing that you can do is to start to foster that in that area and start to appreciate and and give praise for the fact (coughs) excuse me that he leaned into that space Mm. yes i like that and when i i think you're right also holding space is another term that i think a lot of people may not know what the hell that is as well as I think women 
want men to hold space. And I, to be honest with you, I have found that a lot of men that I know hold space. They, they don't know the term, um, but I think that they hold space beautifully. And they sit and they listen and they don't interrupt. <laughs> and they are um, completely in witness of whatever I'm in the midst of, whether that's emotionally or um, being vulnerable and open. Um, and they can definitely hold space. But I think that there are times that that, that doesn't really happen. It's hard for men to... Um, sit and listen without um, holding space. Is there, do you talk about that during your events? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's one of the things that, that I definitely talk about quite a bit. I actually wrote an article called uh, WTF is Holding Space, a guide for men. And so it's just a, it's an article that basically teaches guys, you know, here are the sort of three core elements of, of being able to hold space and, and and hear that properly. Um, I think one of the biggest things to to note is that you know when a guy when a guy is leaning in and trying to fix or solve or provide solutions, he really is trying to do his best to to connect with you. And that doesn't excuse the fact that he's not holding space properly by trying to just solve your solution. And he's not hearing you. It just it's just a reminder in that moment for for you and for everyone that's, you know, not you specifically, but for the people that are listening when they're in that moment that he is trying to make a bid for connection and to to be able in that moment to recognize that he is trying to connect and to be able to soften the space and say, hey, I really appreciate and love the fact that you are offering solutions right now. But what I really need is for you to to listen and to acknowledge you know what's going on for me and sometimes to 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 take the step forward and and ask for what it is that you might need now he still has the responsibility of doing that he still has the responsibility of following through with your request and learning from it and being able to implement that the next time around but for for the guys out there being able to hold space, it's it's interesting because a lot of guys are like, oh yeah, holding space is just like listening, right? <laughs> and it's like, no, I I define holding space very simply. I define holding space as being able to witness someone else's emotional space or emotional experience while being able to simultaneously witness your own. And mm. in that in that space in that place, in that action, because it is an action, there becomes a space that is created between the two people's experience and the two people's emotional experience. And when a man can learn how to do that, and here's the thing, if you can find a guy that, that can hold space for you properly, you have found a very emotionally intelligent man. Mm. Because in that space, and I honor and respect all the women that hold space for men and hold space for the women because it's challenging. Yeah. But it, when when you are holding space, what you're doing is you're recognizing, you are acknowledging, you're experiencing somebody else's emotional turmoil while you're experiencing and acknowledging and witnessing your own emotional reaction to their experience and your own intellectual and mental process of wanting to either solve their problem or jump in and offer solutions or give them feedback or ask them questions and and to be able to witness both of those things at the same time. Mm. So beautiful. All right. Well, I I can't believe it's it's sort of coming down to the end of our interview that went by fast. Was there anything <laughs> that we didn't talk about that you wanted to tell us single ladies who are listening today about anything about oh man men. there's <laughs> there, I mean, so, like a couple of tips of some kind oh boy um yeah i mean there's there's a <laughs> lot um but i think what i feel like what would probably be the most beneficial is is four words from alan watts and he says, belief clings, faith allows. Belief clings, faith allows. And I've come to see that, you know, a lot of a lot of people want to believe 
that there's like the right person or the one or, you know, they want to believe that there's really great men out there. And so they're constantly trying to find evidence that that's true. And when when that happens, it can put us into a bit of a frenzy and it can activate our anxious parts or it can activate our avoidant parts. And one of the most powerful things we can start to do is to just have faith that they're out there, to have faith that they're that that there is someone and faith is a verb by the way so faith requires action it still requires you to go out and do things it still requires you to start to look in the right places for the for the man that you look that you ultimately want to be with but to have faith that when you come across that person it will be less of an intellectualization of of knowing you know of of being able to say like they're the one for all of these reasons but it'll be more of a feeling of faith of this is this is the right thing. Mm. So what I would say is to have faith that those guys are out there and to start to look in different pools if you're not having any luck in the ones that you're looking at, looking for. And and to to realize that there are a ton of men that are starting to step into this space mm-hmm. and maybe maybe they're not Maybe they're not as far along as you would ideally like them to be. Maybe you've been on this journey for five or 10 or 15 years, and they've only been in it for five months, but, right. but they're, making, they're making the effort. And so you know they still have the responsibility of, of doing the work to make it work, but they are out there, and I, and I guarantee it. Mm, I love that. Thank you. Of course. Um, well, how can people find you? And- Tell us about these Man Talks events also. Yeah, so, um, you know, people can just go to mantalks.com. Um, we've got a lot of blog posts. There's, you know, we've got a, a podcast, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And on the, on the website, it'll show uh, upcoming events in, in various cities. Um, I think we've got one coming up in Miami, depending on how the hurricane goes down there. Um, we've got one in Chicago. Uh, Vancouver. Um, early in 2018, we will be coming back to New York for sure. Um, so stay stay tuned for all of that. And then, you know, through any of our social channels, uh, I run our Instagram account, and um, we've got some of our stuff, our our talks and um, podcast episodes that go out through YouTube as well. So you can check that out there. Okay, um, but uh, other than that, I I would just say to uh, to find us online and, and don't hesitate to reach out. Awesome. And I always end all of my interviews with a couple of really quick questions. Okay. Okay. So first one is, uh, is there a book that you are reading right now that you're absolutely loving? (laughs) I'm reading a couple books um, because I'm a big nerd like that. But there is one book called uh, Letting Go. And um, it is a really, really great book. Um, just about that topic about being able to let go and it's, it's called the pathway of surrender by uh, David Hawkins. So letting go the pathway of surrender by David Hawkins. And the reason why I love that book is it's, it's just very, it's very direct and I, and I feel like it's very tangible and it's something that everybody can implement. So whether you've gone through a breakup or a divorce or you know, moved on from your career, or there's just something that you feel internally that you want to let go of, I would definitely recommend this book. Mm. Okay, cool. I have to look into that. Is there, you said there was two? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, the other one is a little bit more business tactical. It's called Perennial Seller by Ryan Holiday. And it's basically on how to create products and services that, or, or write a book that stands the test of time. Oh, nice. For all the entrepreneurs that are listening. Yeah. Uh, what is one of your guilty pleasures? Like something that you don't mind spending lots of money on? <laughs> um, I'm definitely a car guy. I love cars. Um, when you said guilty pleasure, I was like popcorn, dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I definitely, you know, I'm that guy that like, I don't mind buying an $8 you know, bar of dark chocolate every once in a while, just because I think it's incredible. Um, food is definitely another one. I, I love my food. Mm. Uh, so I don't, I don't mind spending, spending money on that, but, um, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm a car guy. It's just, it's running my family. What, what kind of 
Do you have, I mean, I know you're like New York and Canada. So do you have a car in the city too or no? Uh, not here in New York. Uh, I have one back in Vancouver and uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I was going to say it, when I lived in the city, it, it was, it's a pain to have a car in the city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, is there, what's currently at your bedside right now? Just curious. Uh, depends on which city, um, but New York. I'm just trying Let's to say think. New York. <laughs> My bedside table is cleared off, and all I have uh, sitting on my bedside table is a little statue of the Buddha, uh, my watch, and uh, a, a small book called The Magic Art of Tidying Up. I believe that's what it is, The yeah. Magic Art of Tidying Up. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Have you been, have you been, re obviously you're reading that, Is it, have you been doing it at all? Yes. Yeah, we have been. We're we're moving apartments on the 25th of this month, and so it's been a it's been a really cool experiment to go through and and use that book and start purging. Yeah, I've I did it um, several months ago, and wow, I just got rid of bags of clothes that I just were still wearable, but just didn't spark any any anything in me anymore so i was like it's going yeah <laughs> yeah it's really great to purge loved it well connor thank you so much for for being on the podcast today for teaching men all of these really wonderful you know treats i just i love what you're doing in the world um please keep it up i i hope our paths cross um i'm definitely going to look into attending one of your events for sure and um just thanks so much for for being here and for sharing your wisdom with us wonderful thanks for having me well i hope you so and loved this interview with connor as much as I did to learn more about him and ladies to find out, uh, and men to find out when Connor has these really cool events. Actually, if you are on the East coast, there's one coming up in New York city. It sounds like in 2018. And I believe there's a couple over on the West coast coming up. So check out his website for all the information. Um, you also want to go over to margaretromero.com forward slash episode 46. And if you've been loving these interviews and wisdom for the weekends, I would so love it if you can head on over to iTunes and leave a five-star review. Much love, many blessings, big hugs, and I will see you all next week.